Hi, thanks for being here. Um, I first want to thank Connect Next and the UConn um, University of Connecticut for hosting the series and for allowing me to be a part of it. I am honored to be here. So my name is Takiya Whittle and I work for Connecticut Public. We are a nonprofit media organization in Hartford, Connecticut. And um, there I do a couple of things. One, we're partnered with Hartford Public Schools. So I have the honor of teaching high school students about video production and journalism, um, editing and working with cameras. And then I also um, am in charge of a food show for Connecticut Public called Off the Menu, where I get to go out to restaurants and interview chefs and film them cooking dishes. So it's really fun, I enjoy it. So when you think of a food show, um, I want you to just kind of yell out some answers. Like what typically comes to mind? Chopped. Chopped, yes. What else? Anything else? Okay, yeah, some competition in there. Um, people kind of showing you how to make something, right? But off the menu isn't that at all. It's not about technique. It's not about ingredients. You know, it's not today we're going to make this silky risotto with some beef medallions, you know? We don't do that on Off The Menu. But what Off The Menu is about is about passion. It's about persistence. It's about learning how to thrive, learning how to survive. So I'll let you guys take a look. Thursday before Easter in 1993, I um, came down with 106 degree fever. The following day, I went into the hospital. I learned later that doctors told my mother that, that I had about 10, 10 hours to live. I grew up in West Texas. There's a taqueria on every corner. I wanted to do stranger things so people would say, oh wow, you're putting Kung Pao chicken in a taco. Let me try that. In 2010, I lost my mom and I would just be at home cooking. My daughter would come in and go, "My, who's coming over today? I said, nobody, why? She goes, why is all this food here? It was like a coping mechanism for me. Four gentlemen rode up to Springfield and they say they shot somebody in the commission of a robbery or whatever. But I was accused of being the main shooter in that particular crime and subsequently I was arrested. That's an ongoing joke in prison when you say you didn't do it. Almost everyone busts out laughing, but you know, I was actually innocent of crime, so you know, it wasn't a good situation. You know, we wanted to open a restaurant, just couldn't afford it, so we took a gamble, grabbed a truck, opened it up. The test drive we did, I think, was like 200 feet, and Dave was like, we've got a food truck. It could only go about 35 miles an hour in rush hour traffic. Everybody's honking. What have we done? We just sunk like the only $4,000 that we have into this piece of junk. The only time that I can spend time with my family, it was if I go and help them with the family business. It was probably my first 100 pesos that I make. Since that day, I didn't stop. So as you can see with Off the Menu, each chef and restaurant owner featured in the show has overcome some type of issue in their life, some type of challenge, right? You hear from the owner of Sweetwater, the, um, the man who was imprisoned for 27 years, wrongfully in prison, and had to kind of live through that experience. You hear from the owner of Sol de Cuba, who was diagnosed with spinal meningitis, a life-threatening condition, and upon surviving this condition, decided to devote his life to people through food. But not all of the stories are as weighty as that. There's also people like Lucky Taco, where this restaurant couple bought a lemon for a food truck. I mean, the thing had all types of issues with it. The transmission was shot, the brakes were done, the generator was hanging out of the back of the truck when they were driving it home. So they had to sustain their business and take care of their newborn child on top of, you know, having this unusable truck that almost threatened their livelihood. Just the other day, I went to a restaurant called 21 Oak. It's a vegan restaurant in Manchester. And the chef there is from Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a big meat eater back in the day. But health issues came up and he had to alter his diet. So he decided to drop meat and go vegan. But he missed those big flavors, that barbecue and the ribs and the, you know, chicken. He missed all of those flavors. So his mission was trying to recreate those flavors in a plant-based ba version. You know, that was his trial. That was his challenge. So although all of the stories vary, you know, they have one thing in common, and that's perseverance. It's getting through something. It's figuring it out. 
upon kind of thinking about what I was going to talk about for this talk today, I honestly had no clue. It took me a while to really narrow down like what I was going to deliver today. And while looking at my show and kind of reflecting on my work, I realized that a lot of the themes in my show are directly parallel to the things that I've gone through in my life. You know, things like perseverance, things like struggle, grit, relentlessness. You know, I grew up in a low income housing complex called Mount Pleasant. It was the projects. I mean, I saw my fair share of violence and drug related issues. Up until I was six months old, I actually lived with my biological mother and she was addicted to substance abuse. It controlled her. So my mom would leave me in the house as an infant. You know, I'm not even one years old yet. She would leave me alone as she went out and tended to her addiction. I had no father in the picture. So my aunt would get these phone calls from my mom's neighbor and they'd go like, you know, your sister just left the house and that baby wasn't with her. So after that happened, my aunt ultimately, thankfully, luckily, took custody of me. And that's when I moved into Mount Pleasant. It was like a war zone in Mount Pleasant, like l a literal war zone. I remember one time, this guy rushed in our house with a machine gun. It was covered with a blanket, but the blanket wasn't nearly big enough to cover the thing he was trying to hide. And it turns out he had the wrong house, luckily. Um, his neighbors lived next, or his family members were our neighbors, and he was trying to find some place to stash the weapon. So that happened. There was also a time I was at the playground, minding my own business, when I saw two groups suddenly emerge in front of the playground, and then a bang let off. I ran as fast as I could until I couldn't run anymore, until I was out of breath. There was a shootout happening right in front of me. It was so bad in Mount Pleasant that one time I saw a group of kids, maybe about four or five kids, just running, sprinting, like they were out, they were going somewhere. And without hesitation, I was out too, you know? I didn't want to <laughs> get caught by whatever was chasing them. <laughs> you know? It turns out they were just playing a game. <laughs> but in that situation, in that environment, you just yeah. did not want to take that risk. So when I moved to Mount Pleasant, I didn't only move in with my aunt. I moved in with my two-year-old cousin, whom I call my brother today, my uncle, who had you know, issues of his own and often needed a place to stay, and we were also living with my mother's sick and deaf parents, and she had to take care of us all. She did it all. But it wasn't all bad. It was in the projects where I learned things like independence, right? when people would try to you know, persuade me into doing something I shouldn't be doing, or when people in the projects had this mentality that they just couldn't get out, or you know, they just kind of accepted their position in life. I had the mentality to think differently, to have an independent mindset, and to know that there was more to life than the circumstances that I was given. In the projects, I learned strength, I learned grit, I learned freedom of thought, I learned perseverance. I learned, you know, how to get through things, how to figure it out without making a fuss, you know, how to be efficient. Watching my aunt grow up was just amazing. She would come home from work as a single parent, cook us dinner, clean the house, wash dishes, read us a bedtime story, take care of her parents. And she did this every single day, day after day, without giving up, without complaining. She was this awesome symbol of strength and perseverance. <laughs> Making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Making myself cry. <laughs> Another theme that was very common in my life that also reflects to my food show was food. So my aunt and I bonded over the Food Network. Like that was all we would watch. Emeril Lagasse, Rachel Ray, Giada De Laurentiis were like our top three people. It was so funny because growing up in the projects and knowing, you know, there were drug users and drug dealers around, my brother and I would laugh hysterically anytime Emerald would say crack black pepper. 
today we're gonna use some cracked black pepper and we would just lose it. It was the <laughs> biggest joke in the world. Or when Giada De Laurentiis, my mother and I would always um, laugh at the fact that she described everything as creamy. We just waited for it. She's gonna say creamy, we just know it. It could be a hearty bolognese. Something about it was creamy. It could be a piece of toast. And all the gluten strands are just so creamy. <laughs> Something about it was creamy. <laughs> watching food shows with my mom would be like watching CSI or some type of like action-packed <laughs> drama, right? This is my mom watching a food show. She's gonna, oh, no way. She's gonna deglaze that pan with the wine. I told you she was gonna deglaze the pan with the wine. I told you. Wait, is she gonna, oh, I know she's not gonna do that. Is she gonna wrap those scallops with the, I told you, she's wrapping those scallops with the bacon. My mom was just so into it. And that excitement translated into the kitchen where my mom would make dishes from all over, different cultures. One day we'd have fried chicken and collard greens and mashed potatoes. And then the next day we'd have pierogies and kibasa and cabbage. <laughs> You know, there was always a mixture of cultures represented in the kitchen. That has also translated into my food show. You hear from people of African-American backgrounds, from Mexican backgrounds, from Italian backgrounds. You know, I didn't feature all the chefs in my show in this clip, but you also hear from people of Asian backgrounds. I made it a mission in my show to feature people from ethnic backgrounds because that was something common in my life. I'm African American and Puerto Rican, so that already is within me. And then for my mom to expand my cultural palate with these different dishes she made in the kitchen, only better influenced my outlook on food. And maybe that's why the themes in my stories are so common, you know, featuring ethnic people. Maybe that's why the themes of perseverance and grit and strength and struggle are all there. Living in the projects, like I said, people accepted their circumstances. They didn't stretch, they didn't grow, they didn't try to break out of the box. They let it confine them. Off the Menu has won six Emmy nominations. I've received Emmy nominations for my work in producing cinematography, editing, directing, and it's all because I've allowed my life to shine through my work. It's been extremely validating to receive those awards and to know that those awards are a reflection of themes in my life, of things that I went through. So the moral of my talk today and what I really want you to get out of, you know, everything that I said today is in life, you will go through things. They will push you, you know? They will make you want to quit, right? I had so many circumstances in my life where I could have thrown in the towel and said, you know what, I'm just gonna accept what I was given. But I pushed through and I made it work and I broke those walls down. So when life comes at you with challenges, trials, you know, hurdles that you have to jump over, Accept them, cherish them, and let those experiences grow you, right? Let them shape you because they shaped me. And you never know if you're going to have an Emmy Award winning or Oscar Award winning perspective.